guys, Ron here. And a few months ago, I made a video in which I applied real-world evolution via natural selection to Pokemon and created extinct species of pocket monsters that were either ancestors of various other Pokemon or transitional species between two separate Pokemon families. This is almost like alone forms of Pokemon since they also evolved over many, many years and changed form. But what I'm doing here isn't canon. It's all speculation and fun. Just a fun little exercise, like squats. Squats are fun. So keep in mind, I'm not going to be scientifically accurate. In this video, I'm God. I'm the Earth. I am Truth. I make up the rules. Okay, let's begin. Just make sure you've seen the first video too. It'll give you some more context. Our first Pokemon is going to be the ancestor of both Empoleon and Delibird. Now there used to be these now extinct breed of penguins that were huge, so our ancestor penguins will be a foot taller than Empoleon, and that means that this Pokemon will be a king too. We'll describe its story once we whip up the design. Let's -a go! I'm starting by drawing basic penguin shapes, and like both of the Pokemon it evolved into, it will have a head crest made of feathers like Delibird, but three long ones like Empoleon. Its beak is also short like Delibird, but more elaborate like Empoleon, and it has a beard, but not like Santa, but more like uh, an old wise king. Wings that I will change up in a bit, and a cape that ties into the whole monarch theme that Empoleon has, but that cape will also become Delibird's tail after millions of years of evolution. Its eyes are round, but judging. This Pokemon is always thinking of decisions to make. I gave it a nice head design, and now I'm thinking of ways to make the beak more interesting. I gotta use it in a unique way, like Empoleon, but I failed. I'll come back to the beak. I noticed that both Delibird and Piplup have those belly dots, so it makes sense to give him some too. But he looks like Mickey Mouse, so I'm doubting the choice. Uh, it'll stay. We'll have some collars and blade hands. This Pokemon is a good king, actually. It leads its subjects into battle and is the one to break the ice to make a path for its people, so it needs hard wings. But this ain't it. That's when I decided to make them full-on flippers, like an actual penguin. After all, these things can't fly. So now it looks way more penguiny and a bit more menacing with sharp flippers like Empoleon. And those round dots became diamond-like jewels. I also like how they look like cracked ice. And I finally had the great idea of giving his beak a mustache design. Then I abandoned that, but then I put it back because it makes sense. After a million years, the species that became Empoleon developed a trident beak that stems from this mustache beak. And honestly, the final problem I have is that his head is too big for his body, at least for a tall and portly king anyways, so that will change. Now his proportions feel more correct. And here is this regal penguin. It's purple, obviously since it's a mixture of red and blue, but also because purple is the color of royalty. This ice water type is named Kingwin, the king Pokemon. It's benevolent and wise and prioritizes the will of its people over itself. They were so generous that it is believed that an ancient branch of this species evolved into Delibird and forgot about their nobility and focused solely on giving gifts and saving people in Pokemon. Another breed became tougher, nobler, more battle ready, and that is the Empoleon family. So next is the ancestor to all Hitmons. This is going to be an ancient monster whose great 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 grandkids are Hitmon Lee, Hitmon Chan, and Hitmon Top. And I think this Pokemon doesn't specialize in a martial art, but rather brute strength. How about we just sketch the shape of a top-heavy colossus, and his head will basically be an upside-down Hitmonchan head, with the crests that a majority of this family has as a beard. It's a serious man, and like Tyrogue, it's got these helmet ears, and these eyes are basically a combo of Hitmonlee and Tyrogue, and I knew I wanted this Pokemon to have a Greek theme, and therefore a toga, since it's a signature among strongmen and the origin of bodybuilding. His entire apparel is basically a combination of Hitmonchan and Hitmontop's clothes. But the legs are designed after Hitmonlee. They even stretch, but not as much as Hitmonlee's. The arms are massive, and the arm bandages are taken from basically the entire family except for Hitmonchan, who has gloves instead. Adding some face lines really helped make it a bit more interesting. And since I asked Twitter and they said no nips, his chest is bare. And here he comes, Hitmonherc! After Heracles, or the Roman Hercules, it is said that this Pokemon would fight for honor and help lift heavy objects that others couldn't. Its personality is basically like Hercules, not the smartest, but far from bad. One quirk about this Pokemon is that they love to laugh and worship anybody who manages to make them giggle during serious training. After countless generations, different groups began to focus on different fighting styles and eventually became Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and Hitmontop, with their offspring being Tyrogue. Next, I theorized that the Swampert line evolved from Quagsire and instead of losing their juvenile traits upon adulthood like giant salamanders, they kept their childhood external gills. So here is the transitional species between the two. 
So the face is basically a quagsire with longer, more aquatic eyes, and the gills on its face are flowier and softer than those of a mudkip. But although it looked cool, I thought it would make sense for it to not be connected to the stomach pattern. Its hands are a combo of quagsire and swamperts, who already have similar hands, because they're related I guess. And god were the legs just the hardest to decide upon. I redid them a billion times and they're not right until the end. The tail is basically a swampert tail, and I tried to give it something on the head since all the members of the swampert line have tail fins, so in the beginning it has this cute little semi fin, but it didn't match the fin on the tail, so I redid it and thought it would look cool with separate spikes, but it didn't fit the personality of this Pokemon, and didn't mimic any of the fins of the swampert line, so why have it there? And the final design is more balanced in the feet department, the cheek gills are more streamlined and the head is one smooth fin, it's the water ground type Axeland from Axolotl and Wetland or Marshland or even Lowland. It's a ground type too, so it fits even if it's from the word land. Its personality is pretty cool. It's as friendly and derpy as Quagsire, but cooler and chiller. It's less oblivious and actually has a ton of fun competing in athletics. It's basically a faster and smarter Quagsire. This is a Pokemon you want at your side, and it makes sense that it later evolved into a partner Pokemon like the Mudkip family. We did the first three, now let's do the last three. I realized that so many turtle Pokemon either release water or fire from their bodies, so it wouldn't be a stretch to say that they perhaps evolved from the same turtle Pokemon that stored boiling water inside its shell. I think a steam turtle would make sense and I want to make it ancient, so it's going to be old. It's going to have a shell and a face like all turtles do, and I want the head to be flat on the top like Turtonator, and have a beak like all the other turtle Pokemon. It's going to have a loose skinned neck because this thing is old, its eyes are tired and jaded but not too distant, this thing is still nice and gentle, but I really did not know what kind of shell this thing would have. As I started making it, it looked too much like a Torkoal shell, and I also didn't know how I wanted the neck to connect to the rest of the body. It was a mess. I gave it some mouth wrinkles and a hole on the top of its shell, which translates to Blastoise's cannons and Torkoal's shell, but I ended up scrapping the shell design and just making it all smooth and round with a fire design. I came up with a plan. This shell is like an old clay pot with some paint design that makes it look old and more earthy since I want this Pokemon to be like a geyser. The feet are like Turtonators but a mixture of other turtle Pokemon and the fire design mixed with the bubbles which kind of look like warts help give it a fire slash water motif and then some steam, not smoke like Torkoal or straight up liquid like Blastoise. Its tail is inspired by the seaweed tail of ancient Japanese turtle myths that inspired the tail of War Turtle and after making the lines more bold, I gave it a septile-like eye pattern. God, this Pokemon went from hopeless to pretty good. Here it is, esteemed. From steam and the word esteemed, meaning held in high regard, respected. This Pokemon isn't the ancestor of Caracosta who actually lived alongside him, but esteemed was very popular since it could boil food for other animals. Its shell is basically a pot that can boil anything. The more nutritious the food put inside is, the longer these things live. It occasionally blasts all the hot water from its back in order to detox and cleanse its shell from any dirt or harmful materials. That's another reason they live for so long. It was thought that these things were extinct, but a small population was found in a remote island. Now it's time for a canonical connection. Amistar is apparently a distant ancestor of Octillery. Makes sense? So let's make a transitional Pokemon between them. So it's almost like an Octillery with a shell, like Beta Octillery, who is a tank with a military theme. So let's just do that. It'll have a helmet instead of a head shell like Amistar, and originally I was going to give it an Amistar mouth, but it was too creepy, so get that out of here. The body is almost like Amistar's, but less tentacles and more suction cups like Octillery. I gave it balls on its head too, and another shell on its body. This was inspired by Octillery's beta, but also by how veined octopi will find shells and use them as protection. It could go inside the bottom shell and bring its head down so the top shell clamps down and it's safe like inside a Pokeball. I added another tooth just so it's not a straight up Octorok face, and some scars cause the thing is a battler. And here is the final design, the rock water type Corpod from Corporal, Marine Corps, and Cephalopod and Octopod. This Pokemon has less of a shell than the Armonite line, so it's better at battling in some situations, which means that it has high defense and attack. And finally, we have two Pokemon with an obvious connection. Excadrill and Diglett are both moles, but how about a species of Pokemon that is smaller and cuter like Diglett, but has more features than a Diglett, but less than an Excadrill? Something that is between the two in the evolutionary tree. Older than Diglett, but younger than Excadrill. So it'll have a mole shape, you know, with those long noses, but barely a body like Diglett, a round Diglett nose with actual hands, pretty revolutionary for a Diglett, some eyes and tiny feet, not as developed as Drillbur, adding a bit more detail now, and an actual mouth, 
and some drill burr patterns showing that it's super related to the drill burr family as well. It's basically a diglet with an entire body and an actual mole snout. But how about the final design? This is Burrow, the burrowing mole. It pretty much does what a mole does except it can see very well and isn't as mysterious as Diglett. The species went extinct because they weren't as fast or strong as the other mole Pokemon. I know, it sucks. But if you thought this video didn't suck, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Remember that I'm uploading on Saturday now, so tell everybody you know. Check the description for the music I used, a link to the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Twitter. Check out my Patreon or even click the join button to get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!